It's getting cold in Germany. My workshop is not heated, so it gets very cold in here in winter. In the back I still have a separate room, which I don't use yet, and which is still cluttered with stuff. When I started to convert this hall, the function of this room was already evident. Now I want to start working on it. Therefore I clear it first of all empty. In order to have at least one room that doesn't get that cold, I want to insulate the outer walls of this small room from the inside. To do this, I first attach a few beams to the walls. Then I fill the gaps with insulating material and put OSB panels in front of them. The room will house my dust collector and the air compressor, whose hoses will lead through the wall into the main room. Otherwise, I'd like to use this room for smaller work, which you do sitting down. Therefore, I build myself a table and attach a French cleat to the walls again to hang my tools. Here I'll do soldering and handicrafts, drawings and paperworks, and of course warm myself with a cup of coffee during winter. So I bought some mineral wool and OSB plates at the DIY store. As a first step, I plaster a few holes in the walls, which were left from an old cabinet mounted here. Afterwards, I paint the floor with new paint. I still have some paint left from the painting of the main room, so the floor gets the same color as the main room. Opposed to the main room, this room was painted before, but the paint is old and looks shabby. A little bit of paint makes it look less like a junk chamber. Then it's on to the wall construction. For this I bought lots of beams again. The only problem is that the wall construction has to be about 15 cm thick so that you can fit enough insulating material in. Therefore I want to screw two beams together. If I took normal screws they would not reach deep enough into the wall to hold the beam securely. And longer screws would be quite expensive. That's why I want to drill recesses into the beams so that the screws reach deeper into the wall. The beams which then come on top should hold without such a recess because the screws find better hold in the wood and can also grind themselves in a little bit. So I can save a little bit of money for long screws. That should be deep enough. The table drilling machine has a depth stop, which you can specify exactly how deep you want to drill. In this case it's 30 mm. With a Forstner drill I make 5 holes in each beam for 5 screws.
Afterwards, I pre-drill the holes for the screws so that nothing splinters, but mainly so that I can simply set the markings for the drill holes on the wall. Therefore, I use an old screwdriver or ice pick, put it through the hole and make a small dent in the wall. This is how I mark all the holes. Then I drill the holes in the wall, insert a dowel and screw the beams to the wall. The next beam should then sit exactly under the groove between two OSB panels, so it's easiest to position the OSB panels in place and make a mark for the beam. The OSB panels are exactly 62.5 cm wide. And the mineral wool has exactly double the width, 1.25 meters. This is no coincidence, as both are based on the octometric system. The dimensions of brickwork are standardized, at least in Germany, of course like everything else, in the DIN 4172 dimension order in building construction. According to the standard, one divides a meter for this octometric system not as usual into 100 centimeters, but into 8 octometers. Thus one receives the measure 12.5 centimeters, thus an eighth of a meter, and then uses multiples of it. This system is used in particular for bricks. So why 12.5 centimeters? Because such a stone still fits well in one hand and is easy to carry. A brick is therefore 12.5 centimeters wide and twice as long, 25 centimeters. That's why you can stack them so well. At least, almost. Actually, such a stone has only 24 cm length and 11.5 cm width. 1 cm is missing on purpose, because brickwork doesn't only consist of bricks, but also joints. They are 1 cm wide and thus one comes again to the eighth of a meter. The normal sequence is therefore stone, joint, stone, joint. It only gets difficult with corners or openings. Here a joint is dropped. Therefore, protrusions, windows and corners often have strange dimensions, because one centimeter is added or subtracted. As an architect, you are then allowed to struggle with this. But back to the wall construction. Here I also have a window opening, which I would like to keep, so I have to build the wall around it. So I shorten the beams accordingly. I proceeded this way till the whole wall was covered. Then I started the doubling. The screws hold in the wood substantially better than in a stone wall. Therefore I need no recesses, because the screws on the other side do not have to protrude so far out and can grind themselves into the wood a bit. For the window I need a complete frame. A little mortar is still in the way, that has to be removed and then I screw on some wooden beams here too.
If you have sockets, of course, make sure that they are free of voltage before you cut the cable. Then it's time to insulate. Mineral wool is a really nasty stuff. On the skin it itches like stupid and when you inhale it it settles down at the lungs and takes a while until it's broken down. So I was quite anxious to protect myself from this stuff as good as possible. Maybe I exaggerated a bit but it didn't itch on my skin. I then cut the wool into suitable pieces and inserted it into the gaps. That stays in place without further effort. Then I want to nail up the OSB plates. For the window I have to partly adjust the panel and cut out the recesses. The fastest way to do this was to use a handheld circular saw. It doesn't have to be precise to the micrometer. I bought the saw especially for this project and it proved itself very quickly, especially because it's battery powered. It has the potential of becoming one of my most used tools. I attach small blocks to the right side of the window to be able to cover this part as well. Here I can hide mineral wool leftovers later. A few strips to give the window a clean fitting. Then I start the framing. With the handheld circular saw I was not very precise and let the OSB plates protrude a bit. With the hand plane and the chisel I bring them now down on the same level as the wooden beams.
Then I put on a new OSB windowsill. And the window can still be opened. Here the plan was to let it protrude a bit and then adjust it when everything is in place. Actually I wanted to mill this flush with the router, but my flush trim router was not long enough. So I tried to do the whole thing manually with a normal router, which didn't work at all. Only then did I come up with the idea that maybe a Japanese handsaw would work best. It doesn't have to be 100% accurate anyway, because there will be another covering over it later. And here I can hide some mineral wool remainders. And now the wall is completed. But the edge around the window is still very messy. Here I want to put on a wooden angle. I miter it and then simply nail it on. But the windowsill sits so close under the window that I can't open it anymore. Now the router can help me by milling a small rabbit into the windowsill. Then the angle sits on it and the window can still be opened. And if you want to do it like a real pro, you cut a bit too short and insert one last fitting piece. And now the edge also looks good, at least for a workshop. With the second outer wall it's exactly the same game as with the first one. Here I don't have a window which causes me problems, but I have a lot of small steel beams which protrude from the wall. I want to keep them because they make a very stable shelf. So I have to put the OSB plates around them. So measure out the positions of the steel beams and make holes in the OSB panels with a hole saw.
After the wall is finished, the other two walls are painted again in bright white so that the plaster disappears. And then the room is ready, except for the table, the French cleat, the electricity and the dust collector, but more about that in the next video.